Hello and welcome to my channel. Today we will be talking about the revolution of the earth and how it causes the different seasons as well as the occurrences of equinox as well as solstice. The revolution of the earth causes seasons and also the appearance of various stars or constellations at different times of the year. The earth's axis is tilted at an angle of 23 and a half degrees and also the shape of the earth is spherical which is the earth is bulging at the equator and tapering at the two poles. Because of these factors the solar energy which is received by different regions or parts of the earth is also varying. The tilt also determines whether a region receives direct or slanting rays of the sun. When the north pole is tilted towards the direction of the sun, it is summer for the northern hemisphere or the places which are north of the equator as the sun's rays strike the earth at right angle. So because of the tilt of the earth's axis, the northern and the southern hemispheres are alternatively more directly exposed to the sun's rays. So towards the equator because of the tilt of the earth it does not make much difference in the amount of solar heat energy which is received because of the bulge of the equator and the length of the day is practically the same throughout the year and every day is like any other day of the year and weather is almost the same even if we have any kind of climatic condition. Towards the tropics that is between 23 and a half degrees north and south of the equator, it is hot during the summer months. This is when the solar energy or the rays of the sun falls directly or vertically on that particular hemisphere and it becomes cooler when the sun has moved towards the other hemisphere. As we move towards the temperate regions or the temperate zone between 23 and a half degrees to 66 and a half degrees north and south of the equator, the differences of the seasons are mostly felt. This region experiences four seasons which are lasting for three months. In the northern hemisphere towards the temperate zone, December to February forms the winter season, whereas March and May forms the spring season. June and August are the summer season and September and November are autumn season. This variation in seasons is very useful and necessary for the growing and ripening of certain crops. Like in the equatorial region when there is no variation in the seasons, there is no ripening season and no growing season. Therefore the, in the equatorial regions certain type of crops do not grow well. Similarly, if you go towards the polar region or the frigid zone near the North Pole and the South Pole, the growing season or the summer season is very short and there is also a layer of permafrost where crops cannot grow very easily. Changing seasons are essential for all kinds of living beings whether animals, birds, even fishes. They all require a particular season for breeding as well as migrating. When the North Pole is tilted towards the direction of the Sun, it is summer in the Northern Hemisphere and the Sun's rays strike at right angles in the Northern Hemisphere. So on that day, on 21st of June, it is also called as summer or June solstice. So the Sun's rays directly fall at the Tropic of Cancer at right angles. At this time, the North Pole and the area around the Arctic Circle is in continuous daylight as it receives sunlight for around 6 months. During this period, the Southern Hemisphere is turned away from the Sun. Therefore, the South Pole along with the area south of the Antarctic Circle have continuous darkness, especially for 6 months. So the word solstice means sun standing still or reaching the highest point. Therefore, in the summer solstice on 21st of June, the sun's rays when it falls vertically at the Tropic of Cancer, it is at this point that the Northern Hemisphere receives maximum sunlight. During this period, the Northern Hemisphere experiences longer days as compared to nights, whereas the regions which are around the Arctic Circle receives constant daylight. At the North Pole, the sun does not sink below the horizon 
and this causes a phenomena which is called as midnight sun. So the sun is observed throughout the day. Many international tourists they go to a place which is called as the North Cape, which is at 71 degrees north and 26 degrees east in Norway. This place is called as the land of the midnight sun in Norway, and here. the tourists they basically observe the sun even at midnight this place is also the northernmost point of europe so by 21st and 22nd of december the earth's position is turned in such a way that the north pole is moved or is pointed away from the sun and is directed towards the pole star it is in the southern hemisphere that receives direct rays of the sun So the vertical rays of the sun now falls at the tropic of Capricorn and the southern hemisphere is now experiencing summers. From this point the northern hemisphere receives oblique or slanting rays of the sun as a result of which it is experiencing winter. And this time period is called as the winter solstice. This day has also the shortest daylight in the northern hemisphere. Now from this point All the parts around the Antarctic circle receives daylight for 6 months. Now there is a point which is called as equinoxes which is equal days and equal nights. There are two days in the year when there are equinoxes. One is on March 21st and the other is on September 23rd when the days are nearly equal to the nights all over the world. The northern hemisphere on 21st of March from there it is the beginning of the spring season therefore this equinox is also called as vernal equinox or spring equinox from 23rd of september the autumn season starts that is the beginning of the winter season so on september 23rd the equinox is also called as autumnal equinox at this time the earth's axis points neither towards nor away from the sun everywhere on the surface of the earth there are 12 hours of daylight and 12 hours of night time the sun's rays directly fall at the equator and therefore the heat is felt maximum at the equator and it diminishes as we gradually move away from the equator towards the poles on the equinoxes the days and nights are equal all over the world and everywhere the sun rises exactly in the east and sets in the west approximately at 6 o'clock 